So being able to tell how much a linear function changes over time is it's trivial. You just look at the slope. There's really nothing to it. But as we talked about in that last example, linear functions aren't the best representative of really much of anything. They can tell us a little bit. They can tell us something. They can tell us more than nothing. But usually they come well short of telling us everything. And as a result, linear functions don't have a great deal of utility, so we use other functions most of the time. And if we still want to be able to describe how much it seems like our function is changing over time, we still want to think about something like slope, what we can use here is an idea called the average rate of change, in which we're finding the amount that has changed from some point x1 to some point x2 in sort of drawing a line between it, where that line is a construction specifically called a secant line, and that gives us some better sense of just what it is that our function is doing over that interval. So let's get a quick example here about how this works, what this computation actually looks like, because as usual when we have these types of formulas, they don't really tell us what's going on, they just tell us numbers and letters. And then also we'll get a little bit more context to understand how this draws back to what we saw at the end of section 2.2, and a great deal of stuff in calculus as well. So for this example, we want to find the average rate of change of the function f of x equals x squared from zero to two in terms of x. So here, find the slope of a secant line. That's always just a matter of applying that formula. So we're gonna pull it over and we will end up having in this case, two squared minus zero squared over two minus zero. f of x is x squared x is, well, 2 and 0. So we end up with 4 over 2, or we have 2. That is to say, we get that the average rate of change, the slope of the secant line from 0 to 2 for our function is going to be 2. And if you want a picture of what's going on there, it might look something like this, where there's something else that we may want to look at, which is to say that if we look at that sort of jump there, and instead of saying, okay, let's go from zero to two, we'll describe it in terms of the jump itself, a jump of two units from zero. We could instead look at something like that using something like our difference quotient formula, as we would instead have f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x, which would just end up being the difference quotient formula, f of x plus h minus f of x over h as we saw a little while ago. So again, as I said, that's a difference quotient, this is a difference quotient, and in particular, they're difference quotients that represent the same thing, just in a different context. I'm just saying the word different too many times, but that's okay, you're gonna hear it more. Point is here, the idea of looking at what goes on as h gets small, like we talked about earlier, is the same as trying to talk about what happens with an average rate of change as the gap for our average gets smaller and smaller. And as we look at something where those distances get smaller and smaller, we're looking at something where our average is getting closer and closer to being in terms of one point. And if we look what happens at exactly one point, if we look what happens when h equals zero, we're describing what happens with the function at exactly that point. That is to say, we're describing the instantaneous rate of change or the slope at that point, or as I described earlier, the derivative. That's a bit too much calculus for a college algebra class. I just want to give you a preview. In any case, that's all we've got for 2.4. Next week we'll continue on with this stuff in 2.5. I'll see you in there.